how are electric skateboards looked at within the skateboarding community? I decided to ask a certified real skater what he thinks. We got a real skater here. What, what do you think about electric skateboards? Uh, garbage. All right. Well, <laughs> Am I not supposed to say that? You can say anything you want. Here's a controller. But before we get into that, let me give you a bit of backstory. As you can probably tell, electric skateboards are generally frowned upon within the skateboarding community. A lot of skaters already hate on longboarders, especially the ones that ride penny boards or don't have the balls to bomb hills at 45 miles per hour. And then if you add the element of an electric skateboard that lets you go up hills without pushing, lets you stop without ever having to foot brake, most skaters will say that people riding them are kooks that can't do anything but churn, because their board does all the work for them. And you know, they might be right. But when I got an email from MaxFind asking me if I wanted to do a review on a new board they put out called the MaxFind Max 2 Pro that they would send me for free, I absolutely could not turn it down. I just had to see what it was about. On their website, they claim that their board has a top speed of 24 miles per hour with a range of 12 miles. But before we get into riding it, let's unbox it first. All right, so I'm at the casting couch right now and I just got my package. Making so much noise. Alright, you can stay up here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dug out right now, but I'm just gonna unbox it right now so we can ride it tomorrow. They told me to be very careful with this package. But, uh, I'm gonna put this te to a stress test. Okay. That's the cutting. So, as you can see, um, it looks pretty damn good, straight out of the box, Take it out of here. Um, look at it, you can see all the carbon fiber print, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's real carbon fiber, but it does look pretty nice, Just stick her off here, one, oh no, right, it's ruined, you guys need to send me a new board, this has got to be the control over here I think. Cool. So, so the box comes with, you got your charger, you got another part of the charger. They give you a skate tool as well, which is actually pretty nice. Cause yeah, you can, these are just like regular skateboard trucks. So I guess you can adjust them as well. Okay, so make sure you read your manual if you guys get this. Um, pretty much looks like all I need to do is press the power button on here for a second. You press the power button on the skateboard for a second, and it should be, there you go, it should work. And uh, here's the reverse, and it also has braking, which is pretty nice. <laughs> Yo, dude! All right, so it's obviously dark outside, as you can see. But uh, I'm just gonna try it out inside real quick. Jesus, Jesus Christ, dude. This is just way too powerful right now for indoors. So even though it's dark outside, I'm just gonna do a little test ride outside real quick. See uh, how fast it goes. So pretty quickly, I learned that this thing was a lot more powerful than I had expected. So even though it was dark outside, I decided to try it out anyway. And I also learned pretty quickly that the brakes in this thing are pretty damn strong. So I decided to wrap it up for a day and bring it out on a full charge to be able to fully test it out. Right off the bat, one thing I have to say about this thing is that it is fun as fuck. Not having to push when going uphill is something that you just cannot get from anything other than an electric skateboard. Just being able to cruise at full speed without ever having to slow down or even push. Like, it's a totally different experience from what typical skateboarding is. And simply accelerating from fully stopped to full throttle is so addicting. Like, this thing has some serious torque to it. This version is a dual motor drive that really helps get up to speed quick. And the brakes are strong enough to have the rear wheels lock up, just like you saw earlier. And just to let you know, MaxFind did not pay me any money for this review. 
They simply said, here's our skateboard, make a video about it. And I could easily say that this thing is garbage and not only posers would want something like this, but that's honestly just not true. This skateboard is something that literally anyone can enjoy from an experienced skater to a complete beginner. And every time I let somebody new try it out for the first time, the second they stepped off it, the first words out of their mouth was, that was so fun, I kind of want to get one. Oh, and also, this thing can do donuts. Like, what other skateboard can do Yo. donuts? <laughs> Sick drifts, bro. Damn. <laughs> so anyway, back to our certified real skater. All right, man. Give it a spin. Oh, stop. Oh, it's in reverse. Oh, oh I, I got to figure it out. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. Give it some gas. If you pull back on the stick, it slows down. Why do you need to slow down, though? It's just the way it is, I guess. You just gotta learn to actually fuck <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what do you uh, think about electric skateboards now? Uh, you still fucking cute, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> Funny thing is, turns out he was only in slow mode. So after that, we put him into the fastest mode and he was oh, gone. Shit. Pretty much rode that board until <laughs> it was like dead. <laughs> he even had his dad try it out and now I'm fairly sure that he's going to get one himself. <laughs> anyway, for the rest of the day, it was the 21st, so we drank some Capri Suns and put the board through its fair share of durability testing. The next day came around, and today I was going to put the board through a practical challenge. I was going to start at a school near my house and see if I could make it to one of my favorite skate parks in a town over and also go skate there. If I was to go there on the main road the whole time, I could make it in about two and a half miles. But I decided to test the board a little bit and go through some neighborhoods up and up some hills and just take the scenic route there. The biggest thing I realized while riding this board is that even though I loosened the trucks probably a bit more than I should have, it felt really solid cruising at full speed and it would go over cracks and rocks, manhole covers, literally anything with no issues. The wheels in it are 90mm so I can practically take anything that you throw at it. And I was even able to ride it on grass and off-road which was really impressive for a board that was not designed for it. And I bet their off-road boards do way better in that department. Throughout my trip, I was in the fastest mode the skateboard had, and through the bicycling app on my phone, I could track the entire trip to my skate park, which took about 30 minutes. As you can see, a trip started out with a bit of elevation gain for two miles, then it dropped off to a mile and a half hill, and then the other four miles were mostly flat with a bit of up and down. Throughout my trip, my average speed was 15 miles per hour with a top speed of a bit over 25, but when I got to the bottom, I had the longest consistent speed of around 20 miles per hour. Once the trip was all finished and I got to the skate park, the battery was almost dead after only having traveled 7.5 miles, which is about 4.5 miles short of their advertised range. If I took a shorter path, I still could have made it there and back with no problem, but it is advertised as a 12 mile range. So I guess if you can charge out your destination, you can make it the full 12 miles. But I also have to cut them a little bit of slack because I was not trying to be economical in any way. I was starting and stopping frequently, accelerating at full throttle, and although a quarter of the trip was downhill, I was still slowing down and speeding up for a good portion of it for stop signs, traffic, and also of course I was in the fastest mode available, so I'm sure if you were in medium or slow mode, with little to no stops you could probably get over 12 miles. But this is still something that I would like to see improved in future versions of the skateboard, because I typically want the things that I buy to be able to outperform the expectations that are set, and not have to have the perfect conditions to achieve them. While on the topic of things that I would like to improve on this board, I should also mention that the turning radius is really big. Like I'm pretty sure that some cars can turn faster in this thing. To help with this, I loosened the bushings about three quarters of a turn each, and while it made it better for turning, the radius was still pretty wide. One thing I did to help with this is kind of tic tac it over to a 180, but this board doesn't have a tail to it, and because of its weight, it makes it pretty hard to do, but it's not impossible. Although on their website, I did see that Max Fine have a board with a bigger tail on it. Unfortunately, it's a kid's version, so it would be nice if they had a bigger one for adults as well. They also have drive kits, which you can put on your own board, which is something I think most skaters would enjoy a lot more, because you can convert any long board, and even possibly a short deck, into an electric skateboard. And Max Find, if you want to send me one of these, I would love to make a review video on it as well. And something that could be a negative or a positive depending on the person is that the grip tape is a texturized plastic, which works pretty good for what it is to be honest. And it's also waterproof, which is good if you ever have to ride on a rainy day, but it's a bit less grippy than regular grip tape. But I think you can peel it off and just put your own grip tape on it, so I guess if you really wanted to do that, you can. 
So overall, I've had a blast riding this board for the past few days, and I can see myself using it a lot throughout summer for small commutes to friends' houses or just riding around some of the biking paths and streets around my area. The board itself feels really solid, and even after a few drops and dings here and there, it still worked just like it did when it was new. Setting it up was as simple as turning it on and stepping on it, and I would truly recommend this to anybody if they have some spare money laying around from their stimulus check and want to get a new toy to mess around on. It's not something that will teach you how to bomb hills on longboards or skate a regular skateboard, but that's also not what it's meant for. Going up hills without pushing and most importantly having brakes is something that appeals to a lot of people that have never skated before in their life, and electric skateboards could be a first stepping stone into getting into real skating. And I don't think that these will ever replace skateboarding unless they get a lot lighter and faster, but instead I feel like these are kind of in their own new lane, and I'm sure in a few years we're going to have people modifying these things to go over 60 miles per hour, and I'm completely all in for that. So if you guys want to check out MaxFind, you can click on the first link in the description and see the electric skateboards and drive kits that they have. And as for now, that's all I have for your day. Thanks for watching.